Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Uh, my name is Jennifer and in today's tutorial we'll be starting this Christmas bird stocking. And um, I, I've never done this stocking before but it looks rather simple so I'm really excited to get started. This is what is in the kit when you purchase it. It comes with a stack of felt and beads and sequins that are sorted and uh, some needles for embroidery and beading. And uh, I already took out the thread. It comes in a bundle and I, re I organized it per color. All the supplies that I use to make kits are in the description box below if you wanna know um, everything that I use. So um, I already opened it and kind of took a look at the instructions and um, this one is interesting. It's got the chart on the back of the picture. So sometimes the kids will do that. Um, I think they, they do it to save on paper, which is really great. So if you can't find the chart, try and look behind the picture. <laughs> and then um, I pre-cut the main piece that we'll be working on. And here's the rest of the color felt. And the stamps are nice and bright. There's no fading, which is really nice. I know some of the kits I've gotten have really bad fading and so it's hard to see like the lines and sometimes it's hard to see the dots on there but this is very well stamped out and I went ahead and I kind of got excited and I started with the um, branches here's the rest of the instructions it looks rather short so this is gonna be a really quick stocking to put together I'll probably be able to put this together in about a week or so so if you've never made a stocking before, this is a great one to get started on. Nice and simple. These are the branches. I'm just gonna continue with the branches and um, show you how to do that. So we're just using brown, which is a really great contrast to the blue. Um, we're just gonna do an uh, outline stitch here. I'm just showing you how to do that. And the chart will tell you how many strands to use with um, the type of stitch that is required. So if you're unsure, make sure you take a look at the chart. Most stitches will require at least two strands of the, of the color unless it's otherwise marked. When you're appliquing felt pieces on, it's usually one strand. So I'm gonna finish these branches all the way down here and then we'll move on. Okay, so I finished all the branches off the camera just because it took a while. And this part of the branch is a different stitch altogether. We're using the same color. And we're going to be doing a satin stitch here. Now, if you're like me and not a fan of the satin stitch, I totally understand. <laughs> so take your time. And um, the key to the satin stitch is to make sure that your tension on your thread is consistent throughout. This method I found a long time ago, and it's worked great for spaces like this. Um, and it keeps the tension nice and even throughout. But, you know, there's more than one method to doing the satin stitch. So try this out. If you don't like it, try a different method. Um, I'm just showing you kind of the bits and pieces of it here. I do section by section, so I go like, you know, half an inch and then I go up and then down and up and then down and then I move on. I found that this way was easiest, especially with the length of the branch here. If you have made this stocking before, leave a comment down below and tell me how you liked it or didn't like it. Uh, I always read your comments. I don't always reply. Sometimes I just kind of read them and give them a heart or a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I will answer your questions. Okay, so this part, I'm just going to do the top part for you, and then I'm going to do the rest off camera because the satin stitch does take a while, especially if you want it to look nice. So take your time if this is your first time making this kit. I 
I try to go outside the line instead of inside the line so that you don't see the stamp, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do that literally all the way down, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this took me a while. Um, but this is what we have so far, and it looks like a branch. Very cool. And when you take your time, it's totally worth it because the, the work that you put in looks really good at the end. So now we're going to do some sequins and beads here. Um, for, me, for me personally, I use two strands for beads and sequins. Um, just because in the past I've had the one stands break so often. And I have less breakage, less often with double the thread. And um, I always have a stash of thread from previous kits that I use. So just in case I do run out of a color, um, the most common colors I, I have in a stash. I do have some oddball colors too, but with the beads and sequins, um, you know, you can get as close as you can to the color of the sequin and it'll be fine. And that's how I do a bead and sequin. And I'm going to do the rest off camera. Okay, so here is the top cuff of the stocking that we're going to be working on. And again, we're going to go all the way around. See those little dots? Those are all the little beads and sequins are going to go. And when you have um, beads and sequins in a sequence like this, um, I do it a little differently. I don't knot after each individual one. So I just kind of go and um, I kind of use a variation of the running stitch to do this. So I just go all the way through the back and then um, I don't knot, knot it off. I just keep going all the way around. And this is what we have so far. It kind of looks like frosting on the bottom, but it's supposed to be snow. So this goes on top like this and we're going to applique it. And um, you can put a name up here. I'm going to leave it blank for now and I'll add a name later. Which you can totally do, by the way. And since I am lining this stocking, I am going to go ahead and applique the top here. And I can add the name later. I, I've had people ask me about that. Like, oh, if you don't know what the name is that you're doing, can you just leave a blank? Yes, you totally can. And you can add... When I make my knots, I use two strands and then I grab my scissors and trim it so it's just one strand. I just found that it's easier to do a knot. It's a lot harder to knot when you're only using one strand of thread. That's just me. <laughs> and I'm just going to pick a random spot and applique this onto the stocking. And this is the applique stitch. Um, it's also called the whip stitch too. And I'm using white because the the felt is white on top. And you want the, th the thread to match the top felt color. Unless you like, you know, contrast, which... And it depends on how clean your, um, your stitching is. Okay, I'm going to finish this off camera and do the next part. So here are all the snowflakes that I did beforehand. Um, the little details on the snowflakes are straight stitch. And we're going to add these onto the stocking. And I'm going to cut these out. These were a pain to cut out. Um, feel free to cut it out first and then add all the stuff onto it. Especially if you are just not quite comfortable with your cutting skills. <laughs> So I'm just going to add some tack down stitches here. And these are going to really pop. And I did not stuff the snowflakes. They're just double layers. I'm just adding on top of the stocking. Oh my goodness. I'm part of, okay, so <laughs> random note, um, I'm part of a, a Facebook group that does Bacilla stuff and I, and, and I like to see other people's work. And somebody posted a picture of a kit that they were working on and it wasn't a stocking, I think it was like a, like a tree skirt and they cut out every single piece before even working on them. And they organized it by color and they put them in bins and everything and just looking at the pictures, I'm like, ah, oh, 
anxiety. <laughs> that person must not have kids at home because I could never do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd be so afraid to lose a piece. Oh my word. So if you're working on this and you don't have any kids at home, that's cool. You can do it like that. But man, if you've got kids at home, there's no way I could do I could do that. <laughs> I'd be so afraid to lose a piece. So I'm going to finish these off camera. There's only a couple here. So, um, and then we're going to work on the birdhouse. Okay. So this goes down first and then this goes over it. While doing the front of this birdhouse, um, I quickly realized that all these sequins, um, for the birdhouse, like the gold sequins, I had, I had not, I did not have enough. I think I had enough for like a third of this. And I'm just like, really? Whoever put this kit together <laughs> did not give me enough sequins to finish the front. And um, I even looked in my stash and was like, okay, I have no gold. I have no gold sequins. So I had to go and purchase sequins for the front so I could s finish the front of this, um, which is a pain in the butt. I've actually never had that happen before in a kit. Um, I have uh, run out of other colors, like the more popular colors, like red and green. But I've never run out of, like, a non-used color. Like, gold is very rarely used in Bucilla kits, I've noticed. And so I was like, okay, what the heck? <laughs> I had to go buy them. I had to go out and buy sequins, which is a pain. So anyway, <laughs> here I am stacking the rest of the colors onto the birdhouse. Um, I got the brown on the bottom and then the red for the roof. And I am putting the white snow on top of the roof. Okay, so um, for these leaves, um, I went ahead and did all the embroidery and sequining uh, beforehand, and um, I cut them out one at a time and put them on one at a time. Um, for kits that have like a bunch of the same, like in one color, I like to just sit down and do them all in one sitting. Um, it's a lot, I feel like it saves time for me because that way I'm not like, doing them each individually and then cutting them out and then putting them on. Like I feel like if I do them all in one sitting and then cut them out as I need them, that's a lot easier for me. Um, it saves me time. I have done this with many other kits in the past. And here I'm showing you how to applique them. So um, I just appliqued like the bottom portion of the leaf and then left the top kind of unattached in some areas. Um, You'll see what I mean in a second. But here I am just kind of appliquing um, all the way around. Um, just kind of, I mean, it's kind of like a tack down, kind of not type of deal. Um, I'm not appliquing them completely all the way around. I'm just putting stitches um, in certain parts of the leaf to give it more of a 3D look. So um, as I finish these leaves, I'll show you what I mean but I'll finish the leaves off camera just so you see oh there's my kid <laughs> showing me homework and uh, you'll see what I what I mean by the leaves okay so here we are with both colors so um, I did leave some of these uh, tops um, unattached to kind of give it more of a 3d look and um, I did it for both colors, so it's amazing how the tree pops with all the leaves on it. It's super cute. And I just, uh, I'm doing, uh, I did the birds ahead of time, but I noticed that these be these berries, um, I'm, I'm going to wait to do those. And we're going to actually cut these out separately and attach the berries with a bead and sequin only. And that's what it does call for in the instructions. So... That's what I'm showing you. And these be these berries are so tiny that they don't need a lot of applique anyway. So they just need a bead and sequin and you're good to go. And make sure that you um, refer to the picture given in the kit because um, it'll tell you the placement of the berries. Um, I don't see any stamps on here that show you where the berries... There are some stamps. Um, but some of the berries don't have stamps, so I don't know if that's just like the stamps just weren't on there or they were on there, but they came off. I'm not sure, but most of the berries have stamps as you can see. Um, but yeah, same rules apply double knots for 
for the beads and sequins. If they're close enough together, I just keep going until I, I run out of space and then I, I uh, knot in the back. And I do this for all of it, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of these awesome tutorials. And um, thank you so much for watching. This is this stocking is so cute. I can't wait to finish it. Make sure you um, don't miss this next episode of the Christmas Birds, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.